What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And like I said, I was going to start doing these with set five, and I guess here it is. I mean, I woke up this morning not expecting anything to be revealed. If anything, I was expecting the World Tournament to have some type of reveal, but the uh, Super Rares are not getting revealed until next set, until next week. So uh, one of my good friends, uh, you know, Nick, you know, shout out to you, Dark Shift Gaming. He uh, messaged me an image of uh, what seemed to be like a new leader, the Shenron leader. So right away I was like, what is this? And I went online and I saw that he had posted it in our Facebook group, uh, the reveal for set five, which is super interesting and caught me off guard. But, you know, I love when they reveal new products because I love, you know, to seeing where they're going with their designs and uh, just the growth of the game in general. So... What we have right here is the new set. It's set 5. As you can see, the release date is going to be November 9th, 2018. Booster packs are going to MSRP for around $399. Uh, you know, standard information, booster box contains 12 cards. Uh, I'm sorry, booster pack contains 12 cards. One box contains 24 boosters. And then a case has 12 boxes. Um, so the set information itself, as far as the breakdown is concerned, you can see here uh, in the rarity section, there's a total of 221 cards in the set, uh, 60 which are going to be comments. Now, the new thing that they're adding with set 5 is instead of just having uncommon foils, you're also going to have common foils. So each card in the set is going to have a foil version, which is, you know, it's going to make uh, it's going to make it a little more difficult for pull ratios for sure. But for those of you who like blinging out your decks, you're, you know, you're going to have the option of getting pretty much every card in foil. And it's smart that they're doing this at the start of a new block, which we'll get into. Um, but you can see there that there's going to be 60 common cards in the set, uh, foil or non-foil, 30 uncommon cards, foil or non-foil. And then we have 18 rares, 11 super rares, and special rares, and one secret rare. Now, I want to touch on the super rare, special rare. You can see there's 11 and 11. Basically, each super rare is getting a, a special rare variant. So each super rare is going to have an alternate art, which is, again, it's going to make the pull ratios a little more difficult, but it's going to, you know, give you more incentive, not incentive, but it's going to make it, you know, the thrill of, of opening a pack, hopefully hoping for an SPR. Um, it's going to make it more exciting. Now, I did, I do, I do feel like I read somewhere that they were going to change the, uh, the ratios per pack. And I believe, um, each pack is going to contain, um, an SPR as well as, um, was it, was it that I, I forgot where I read it. Maybe it's not a pack, but each, each box is going to have, um, an SPR in it or something like that. I think that's what it was. I think I read somewhere that each booster box is going to contain one special rare. So if you buy a case, you're going to get 12 SPRs. Hopefully that means you'll get one of each. I, I don't know what the ratios are going to be broken down specifically per card, but I believe I read somewhere that when they introduced set five, they were going to do one special rare per box, which is good because that means everybody buys a box, they get a special rare. So it's not too bad. Um, and of course, the secret rare, we don't know what it's going to be yet, but you know, this is where speculation comes in. So as we move further down here and we start looking at, you know, the set in total, there's a trailer here that was posted on YouTube. The theme is uh, Shenron's Wishes. Basically what that means is we have a new leader skill upon awakening. So what we're accustomed to in the game so far is when our leaders get to four or less life or some leaders when they do it at six, you have the ability of awakening and unlocking more uh, abilities on the other side of the card. Uh, basically, you have the option of either restanding two of your energies or drawing two cards. Leaders in set five are not going to have the awaken key skill. They're going to have what's called wish. Um, so we're going to get into it in a second here. But first, we're going to talk about the Dragon Ball card. <laughs> basically, it's a zero cost extra card where it states, you know, Dragon Ball. Obviously, it's the key skill or it's key text. It says you can include as many copies of this card in your deck as long as the number does not exceed seven. So you can have seven Dragon Balls in your deck. That's basically it. You can't have more than that. And this card's effect is active main. If your leader is Shenron, draw a card. So that's pretty good. It's a zero cost extra card that replaces itself. So it's, you know, you go even without having to tap any energy. It's like you're playing a 43 card deck. And as we get down here, it actually reveals um, one of the new leaders that we're going to have in set five. So we have Sorbet. 
Um, and it, it goes along with the wish mechanic as well. So if you look here, um, Sorbet is a 10k power uh, leader. Ooh, sorry about that. Is a 10k power leader. And um, on the on the on the unawakened side, you can see the artwork there. He's obviously a yellow leader. He has the Dragon Balls kind of, you know, floating around there. And when he awakens or when he wishes, he becomes Frieza Resurrected Emperor. So how it works essentially, how the wish mechanic works, is it says right here, wish. When there are seven Dragon Ball cards in your drop area, you can choose one desire card in your drop, add it to your hand, and flip this card over. Now. I'm not exactly sure what the desire cards are just yet, but as you can see here, we're going to zoom in on the Sorbet leader here first. We're going to zoom in on Sorbet here, and you can see that he has an auto once per turn. When one of your battle cards attacks, it gains plus 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. Uh, then choose one Dragon Ball card from your deck or life, add it to your hand, then shuffle the area that you searched. So that's pretty cool because it actually gives you an interaction with your life pile or your life total, uh, and it allows you to search for your Dragon Ball. So you can use this strategically to get closer to you know, your Awakening state, which in this set is going to be Wish. Awakening you know, has no um, relation to your life total anymore. It's just essentially this new, this new mechanic that allows you to flip over when you've met the requirements for the Dragon Balls in the, in the drop area. So basically, Sorbet allows you to dig once per turn for a Dragon Ball, and once you get all seven in the drop, you can remove them from the game, and, um, oh, actually, you don't even need to remove them from the game here. It just says when there are seven Dragon Balls, you get the ability to unlock the effect. It's pretty cool. I mean, you don't really have to pay, I guess, or remove them. I guess they'll have some other interaction with the removal from the grave. But So then when you flip over, he becomes this Frieza here. Um, make sure I get it in for you guys. Resurrected uh, Frieza Resurrected Emperor. Uh, he also has an active main once per turn. Choose one of the following cards. So he has three different effects. Uh, his first effect is draw card. So once per turn, draw card, active main. His second effect is choose one yellow or black desire card from your hand with an energy cost less than or equal to your current energy and activate its main, its active main skill. So this is going to allow you to activate cards from your hand without actually having them on board, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, because it gives you some interaction with your with your leader um, without having to commit a resource to the board. So that's pretty cool. And then its its last effect is remove seven Dragon Ball cards from your drop area from the game. Choose a total of up to two of your opponent's battle cards and energy. Switch them to rest mode, and this card gains 15,000 power for the duration of the turn. Then flip this card over at the end of the turn. So this is like your all-in push for game. I mean, you're going to gain 15k power, so he's going to be a 30k swing. And you're going to be tapping down two of your opponent's creatures and two of their energy. So you definitely want to make sure that you do this uh, when you swing for game. Because at the end of that turn, you're going to go back to your, your unawakened side or your or your front side, basically, is what we're going to have to start calling it now. Um, the cool thing is, it seems like this final effect does remove the seven Dragon Balls from the uh, the game. So you won't be able to you know put them back in there so to speak so if you're going to really do this you're going to lock yourself out from being able to you know wish yourself to the other side so you kind of have to be strategic in when it is you're going to practice effect but it's really cool i like seeing the flavor of the design i feel like bandai really stepped it up with their design uh this set because it has a lot to do you know with the characters and, and with the lore of the of the anime and everything like that so it's not a generic like attack draw card you know i, th I think they kind of put their helmets on and they're, and they're going to give us something very special this set so far it's turning out to be uh pretty exciting so we're just going to fix our, our view here we're going to scroll down and see what else we have to offer um so these are the update schedules i do apologize for that page that's up i'm doing this from my phone so uh, it's going to give me that option. But you, you have here uh, basically the, the release schedule. So next Friday, uh, September 7th, we're actually going to get the updated blue cards. Now remember, this is set 5. But we're also next Friday going to get 
the super rares from the world tournament. So next Friday is going to be a pretty big day. Um, obviously, your reveals are 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 12 a.m. Uh, Pacific. So if you guys are up on the East Coast here at 3 a.m., you'll have some goodies to look out or to look forward to uh, when it comes to set five. Uh, I myself will be continuing to post these spoiler videos or these reveal videos as set five gets released because that's what I said I was going to do. So I'm a man of my word. I'm going to do it. So we have here blue is the updated September 7th reveal. Red is going to be September 21st. Um, green is going to be October 5th and yellow is going to be September 28th. And then of course, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we also have the update on September 7th for the black cards. Now, this little image here is pretty interesting. I'm trying to, I'm going to try to see if I can get it as much of a, of a frame as possible here, but this is kind of like a spoiler on, on some of the leaders or some of the cards that are going to be quote unquote uh, revealed in the set. Now you can see above, which is out of the frame, the Shenron, which yes, there is a Shenron leader. We're going to get into that in just a second. And on the bottom right here, we have Frieza, which we've already seen. It's the backside of Sorbet. Now, the other three silhouettes that we have here, there's a lot of speculation as to what they're going to be, but I can pretty much guarantee that the far left is going to be Janemba. The one in the center is going to be Vegito. You know, those are just typical designs that I've seen, you know, being a fan of the anime. And you kind of can tell, you know, just by the appendages that, <laughs> that Janemba has on the top of his head, you can tell that's him. And uh, you can tell Vegito's um, outlined by the halo on the top of his head because in the uh, Fusion Reborn movie, when Vegeta and Goku fought Janemba, they were still, you know, in other worlds and they had to fuse to become Gogeta. Now, the one on the far right is interesting. Now, if I'm color coordinating these, um, Shenron is your black leader, Frieza is your yellow leader. I'm assuming that Janemba is going to be red and Gogeta is going to be blue. Um, so this far right leader um, is probably going to be green if I, if I were to put my money on it. Now, I was having a conversation with my teammate Enrique. Shout out to you. Uh, Enrique, um, I, as to what the possibility of this leader could be or this card could be. And we were looking at it and we we're looking at the bulkiness of it. And at first I thought it was going to be Bojack. Um, if you guys don't know who Bojack is, he was one of the villains in one of the Dragon Ball movies, uh, Bojack Unbound. It was the first Dragon Ball movie post cell game so goku was already deceased at this point and gohan was like you know pushed to the forefront as being the the hero of the earth and he just wrecks bojack it wasn't even a fair fight but i speculated that it could possibly be be bojack now as soon as i thought this i went online i started looking at images of bojack and it could be bojack but it makes more sense to what my my teammate enrique said uh, we came to the agreement after much deliberation that this is probably going to be Super Android 17. Now, it makes sense because Super Android 17 is going to have the Android tag. Of course, that's going to be his special trait. And being in the green color, it's going to give you synergy and allow you to use other Android cards as well You know, when, in the same color family. So it would be really cool to see a Super Android 17 card. So I have my fingers crossed that that's what it's going to be. I don't really see any other possibilities. It just makes sense as far as the timeline is concerned. Uh, I would be surprised if it's BoJack. Um, I, I'm leaning more towards of it being a Super Android 17 right now at this point. But we'll see what happens. Um, and then as you scroll further down, it just says to be continued and, you know, other things as far as um, what's going to be coming out. Um, so as you guys can see, I'm on the official Dragon Ball Super Card Game website. And if you scroll up to the top here and you click that starter deck tab, you know, you'll get the drop down menu and you'll see the two new starter decks that are becoming coming out in this new set. You have the black version, which is going to be starter deck seven, and you have the blue version, which is going to be starter deck six. So let's check them out. Let's see what we have available, you know, as far as the, the black starter deck is concerned. So we're going to scroll down here. And the interesting is, is the interesting thing is, it's going to be updated on September seventh, of course. Um, but you see the release date uh, being November second, so it's actually coming out a week earlier than the the actual official set, which I think is pretty interesting because it's going to allow players to experiment with the starter deck and see, you know, what their niche is going to be with the current set before they commit to buying either X amount of product or just, you know buying the singles. So I think that's a really smart move on, on Bandai's behalf, uh, being able to let your, your market just, I guess, test it and see if they're going to enjoy it or not is, is really interesting. Uh, so I do like that. 
Um, so we're going to have both of the starter decks come out on the same day. So it's going to be November 2nd. And you can see that they're going to MSRP for like $12, which is basic. And they pretty much include, you know, 50 cards plus a leader. And there's five exclusive cards to the deck itself. So that's pretty much standard as far as that goes. Let's see if we have any more information. You can see they're designing everything, you know, 51 card deck, the play sheet, and the rule manual, stuff like that. So it would be the same thing if you were to go here for the starter deck for the blue version. You know, same thing. You can see the reveal here in the release, you know, November 2nd. It's going to be updated on the same day as the black deck. So you have that as well. Uh, the contents is going to be the same. All, everything is, is, is essentially the same. Uh, so that's good too. Now we're going to go here and take a look at the special pack set. And you see the official name of the set obviously is Miraculous Revival. So we're going to click on here and we're going to go down and scroll and see what we got. So the special pack set is going to be updated on October 5th. So that's probably the latest date we're going to have any reveals. Um, as far as, you know, besides SPRs and secret rares, as far as like normal set goes, that'll be the release date for that. And you can see the release date is November 9th. So it's going to, it's going to come along. It's going to come out along the same release as the official set. It's going to MSRP for 16 bucks, which is normal. Special pack includes four boosters and one promo. You know, it's very basic as to what we get normally. And you can see that these are some of the booster packs and how they look. But the rest of the booster pack art artwork will be updated on October 5th, as well as the promotional card and the rule manual that we're going to be getting in this set as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, so far, um, there has been a reveal of a Shenron leader, which I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, so stay tuned for that. But, you know, for the most part, you guys can check it out. You can go to the official Dragon Ball Super Card Game website. I'll link it. I'll link it in the description below, so you can check it out. And we're going to be doing these videos every Friday until the set is out. Uh, as long as there's a reveal, I'll be doing a video on it. Um, I do apologize for this wonky format. Um, I know it's not the cleanest looking thing, but I did want to get this information out there for you guys. Um, because I did promise that that's what I was going to do. I'm going to see if I can make it a little more smooth and a little better as far as on the eyes is concerned. But I figured I'd share my opinion on the set and show you guys so far what we have available. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow us on all our social media, You know whether it's Twitter, Instagram, join the Facebook group, join the Discord channel. If you haven't checked out the Patreon, please do so. Um, I'm going to be updating it uh, he here in the next couple days or so just to make it more accessible to the public. But the main reason I started the Patreon was to be able to give discounted prices on sealed products. I know there's a lot of heat going on right now with the Facebook groups about people in there in the Patreon and feeling like, you know, they're creating a paywall for content. But to each his own, you really can't fault somebody for trying to better themselves or make a living. Not not so much make a living, but feel any type of compensation for the hard work that they put in. Uh, you know, I myself, I put in a lot of work making videos and editing and stuff like that, but I don't put in nearly as much work, you know, as the other guys like, you know, the Hill Twins or, you know, Anthony Hernandez or Matt Combs from 3XG. I don't put in nearly as much work as those guys. Uh, I, I literally don't even maybe put in 10% of the work that they do, and it's still a lot. So I can, I understand, you know, time is money, t and, you know, time and effort is, is, is money. Um, and, you know, these guys have very, very good minds for the game, and they have a lot of information that they're willing to offer you. Um, so, you know, pick their brains. I mean, the great thing about Patreon is it's optional. Nobody is forcing you or holding a gun to your head saying you have to do it. So if you if you don't agree with it, then you don't have to partake in it. That's the best part. But it is available for those who, who want to take part in it. Um, other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Be there or be squared.